The frustrating thing, I think, to everybody who is, has been organic for a long time is that organic policymakers don't know what organic is anymore. Fertile soil has always been the foundation of organic farming. But in recent years, the USDA has changed all that by allowing large-scale certification of vegetables and berries grown hydroponically without any soil at all. Organic farmers protested this failure in 2015. A year later, a much larger rally in Vermont with hundreds of farmers and eaters called on the USDA to keep organic farming based in the soil. Who's got soil? I know the fight that I had to go through to get the original organic farm legislation through. I want organic to mean organic to mean organic. Would you agree with that? Then you've got folks out there, including in big ag, who want a free ride and basically get the benefit of the hard work that organic farmers do to pile on and take some of that market share with a label that wasn't earned. In case you don't know, there are 1,200 lobbyists on the Hill that work for the agriculture and food processing industry. They spend about $350 million a year on forming opinions in Washington, and that's more than the defense industry, so don't underestimate their power. We, the creators, refuse to see the promise of organic farming compromised by profiteers. We won before, and we will win again. You know, we have a right to this, this term organic. We have a right. I have a right. I've been doing this all my goddamn life, you know? And I have a right to that continuity. And this, this hydroponic bullshit is like, I mean, it's a perversion. The 40 years that I've been involved in organic farming, I'm not willing to let this group of people take it away. As organic standards have been eroded and even ignored, the movement to protect organic has grown. In 2017, there were 15 rallies to promote real organic practices all across North America. The rallies were a call to action to reclaim strong standards based on traditional organic farming. Ignoring earlier recommendations and world standards, the USDA has sided with industry and embraced soilless production as organic. Hundreds of millions of dollars of hydro berries and vegetables grown without any soil or any means of identification are currently being certified and sold as organic each year. Without soil, it's not organic. As an urban ag grower myself and a person that works very closely and advocates for people who grow in the city, um, I am staunchly in support of anyone who's stewarding soil. Soil has always been the foundation of organic growing, um, so I think in a lot of important ways soil represents the history of organic, but I think it's also important to remember that healthy soil, as one of the keys to reversing climate change, should be the future of organic as well. Right. Regardless of you know, what's going on with big business, we have to own that word and keep the spirit of it. You know, we've always said that organic is not based on input substitution. Well, hydroponic is totally input dependency. You, you're getting a watered down crop and you have no idea. Our relationship to the soil and our relationship to place is, is the key to this whole thing. Organic without soil and without all the microorganisms of the soil is like democracy without people. It just doesn't work. Well, here we are, and we're not going to stop until everybody in this world knows that organic farmers farm in soil. It's the only way you can be an organic farmer. The rallies were also protesting confinement feeding operations for meat, milk, and eggs. These CAFOs are now being passed off as organic farms to unsuspecting eaters. As a mom, I've always really counted on that organic label, so I know what I'm feeding my children. If the new animal welfare standards were implemented, three quarters of the certified organic eggs in America would be decertified. Small farms cannot compete with, quote, organic egg farms housing two million hens in 10 industrialized, industrial sized warehouses with only the most cynical description of outdoor access to offer. At the rallies, over 50 organic leaders spoke out, calling on the USDA to protect real organic. 
They pointed to the widespread loss of integrity of the USDA organic program, which permits hydroponics, factory farming of animals, and massive imports of fraudulently certified grain. That 66% of the imported grain in the last, since May of 2016, based on that sample, that has been total fraud, and the NLP seems to have a problem finding the ships. In November of 2017, farmers and eaters from all over the country testified to the National Organic Standards Board in Jacksonville, Florida. They called on them to keep the soil inorganic. That when the consumer loses confidence in the brand, the sales go down. We say let the hydroponics production method develop its own marketing label based on the merits of their system, not ride the coattails of a successful label that doesn't match their methods or goals. Despite the amazing turnout, the Standards Board failed to prohibit hydroponics in the organic standards. This historic decision revealed the growing split between the USDA and the organic community. What happens next is up to us. As the USDA attempts to redefine organic, we won't back down. I don't see anybody in this room that is opposed to hydroponics that's going away. Are any of you guys going away? I, I don't think so. We're here for the long haul. Learn the many ways you can help to protect organic. Go to realorganicproject.org.